Okay, so as we discussed today in class when we looked at the, um, the results of the Black Death and how it changed Europe, um, we're going to be looking at what's called, becomes called the Renaissance, okay? And it's basically um, all these changes that go on in Europe, the Crusades, the Black Death, um, and a whole lot of other stuff, the increased trade, um, all cause Europeans to rediscover the knowledge of the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans. And it leads to a period of creativity called, and learning called the Renaissance, where there's a much more, um, a much more of a focus on the individual um, and new ideas about religion, and it causes a split within Western Christianity that becomes known as the Reformation. Okay, so what was it? It's an era in Western Europe from four, approximately 1450 to 1650, dominated by two major ideas, and I'll talk in more detail as we go along on especially the topic of humanism. Okay, so there's an emphasis on classical achievements, which means whenever we talk about classical, we're usually talking Greece and Rome, uh, based on logic, reason, evidence, art, science, math, architecture, philosophy, literature, drama, and this focus on the individual. And a lot of that leads to um, a rise in what's known as secularism, which means that people are less religious than before. Religion doesn't dominate daily life um, the way it had during the Middle Ages. Okay, so before the Renaissance, Europeans lived through this period we call the Middle Ages. During that time, people are concerned a lot with church and religion, and everyone's activities center around getting to heaven rather than life here on earth. And some of that is because, as we've talked many times, life is not that great. So you focus on the afterlife because something's going to come better down the road. The Black Death is kind of the culmination of all of this kills a third of the people in Europe, makes life even more scary and more danger. And to, so to escape that danger, people turn their life and their minds to God and church. Okay. Um, Black death also causes people to move around, to get out. They, they run away from the plague, okay? Um, and it can, encourages a much more globalized culture. So we will be talking about over the course of this unit, over the next couple of weeks, um, how these, this movement and everything else impacted cultural and religious change um, in the two to three hundred year period following the end of the Middle Ages. Okay, so a couple different dates, 1300s to 1500s, I said 1450 to 1650, it really depends on when you measure the start, a lot of historians go from kind of the dying out of the Black Death. Some say it was a little bit later. Um, a good benchmark is probably 1350 to 1650, somewhere in that neighborhood. And this period is called the Renaissance. And Renaissance simply means, in Latin, rebirth. It's a golden age. It's Europe's last golden age, one of Europe's last golden ages. Okay, Arts, literature, and science. Begins in mid-Italy, eventually spreads northward. Cities of Italy are the hotbeds of this. They're thriving centers for trade and manufacturing. So there's a lot of money. Um, and the people making this money are willing to use it to promote art and education. So a little more on that. Causes. Increased trade with, uh, with Asia and other regions as a result of the Crusades. You have the growth of these large, wealthy city-states in Italy. Renewed interest in classical learning and ancient, of ancient Greece and Rome. Rise of rich, powerful merchant, merchants who become patrons of the arts. Um, increased desire for scientific and technical knowledge. And a lot of this stems out of um, the desire to grow your business, to get richer, to build better ships um, so that they're not, you're not losing cargo um, on trading runs and to be able to trade farther and farther away. Um, we'll talk a lot more about that when, uh, a couple weeks down the road when we get into the whole area, area of exploration. And then you simply had the desire to beautify cities. After the Black Death and the darkness of the Middle Ages, people want to see pretty stuff again, so they, they commission art to do that. Okay, so where was the Renaissance? Begins, as I've said, in the Italian states of Rome, Genoa. Florence, Venice, and Naples. Predominantly, Florence is kind of the leading light of all this. Um, wealthy merchants, as I said, people who traded between the Muslims and the kings and lords and princes of northern Europe, they're making a lot of money. 
And then in Italy, you have access to the works of ancient Greek, the stuff that was brought back by the Romans, the Roman artists, um, scientists, mathematicians, uh, that was preserved by the Byzantines and the Muslims and brought back from the Crusades to these main trading cities. Okay, Italy's central location obviously makes it a center of all this Mediterranean trade, as you can see in the map, with the trade routes on it. Okay, trade routes carry new ideas and inventions, cultural diffusion, as we've talked about many, many times. Um, and the biggest place culture is, uh, information and knowledge is diffusing from is the Middle East, and the Middle East is a conduit to China and India. Trade also fuels this, um, and it pays for everything. So we'll be looking a little closer at the geography tomorrow and how this trade really develops. Uh, so what I'd like you to do, um, complete the attached Google form uh, on this video and submit it. And we will talk in class about the geography.